Wilson Morales from Black Feminine TV talking to editor extraordinaire Joy McMillan regarding her work on Barry Jenkins' The Underground Railroad. It's Joy, obviously you and Barry have gone back longer than we expected, longer than we know of, you know, so it's always, is it always easy when he says, I got another project for you? Yes, you know, I, it's one of those things where, um, Barry is always, always, I feel like working and I feel like I'm so blessed to be a part of his team. And so, yeah, you know, Barry says we're going, we're all ready to move. And um, this one was, you know, exactly the same as it was before. Um, we were prepared. We knew it was going to be a long haul. Um, and I, you know, I hope that we succeeded in delivering something that's um, just as memorable, memorable as the rest. Unlike a film, this is a, a series. So it's not like you're working on, you know, you're worried about uh, a certain framework for a certain period of time. You know, you constantly, because it's this many episodes, it's a lot of work. Is this the longest amount of work you've done in your career? Yes, you know, I actually did five of the 10 episodes. Our other editor was Alex O'Flynn and then my assistant Daniel um, did the Fanny Briggs episode, episode um, seven. Um, and it is one of the longest um, well, I was going to say our longest, but we're about to do the Lion King prequel. So <laughs> at the time, it was our longest um, project that we've done. And it was one of the ones where um, the longevity of the process actually helped us inform on how um, the series would take shape. And so we appreciate having, you know, that time in the edit to really cultivate each episode and, you know, thankfully help us land in a place where we were successful in not only conveying Cora's journey, but also the characters that she meets um, throughout each state. At the same time, because there are other editors involved, are the three of you or as many or whoever's on the team collaborating so that way everything can look consistent, even though it's a different journey per episode? Yes, you know, I watched um, all of the episodes and, you know, Alex O'Flynn, super talented. He cut, he cut um, Chloe Zhao's um, film, The Writer. Um, his aesthetic and his sensibilities were such a good match with not only Barry, but myself. And so I think a lot of times it's hard to discern like which episodes were edited by um, different editors. And that was our overall goal for you not to be taken out. But like the experience was one that each state had its own little tone and um i think that was one of the things that we were very successful with is like out you know laying out um the series in a way where you felt connected to cora but also each experience through the journey you know when you finally arrive at the end i feel like it's a satisfying watch for the audience you know i spoke to barry earlier and obviously the thing i said to him is like you got to get people through episode one yes you're saying once you get through episode one, then it gets a little easier, you know, uh, episode one, you have to get through it, you know, and as the editors, we're watching this stuff, and I'm specifically talking about episode one, um, at what point do you say, all right, this is enough, <laughs> you know, without going into so, much, so many spoilers, we're like, this is enough, and unless he's telling you, nah, keep it going, we need the effect. <laughs> yeah. You know, the the what to show and what not to show was one of the conversations that Barry had with not only myself, but also our cinematographer, James Laxton. And I think, you know, the book um, written by Colson Whitehead is one that does, you know, his language and his tone, his tone is so unique. And so we never wanted to do a disservice to the moments that he actually, you know, presented in the novel. And so with Georgia chapter one, even though, you know, there are elements of it that are very devastating, we wanted to highlight that connection between Cora and Caesar and allow the audience to know that even though there's some traumatic events happening now, you know, get on that train with them and go on that journey because it'll be worth it, the experience at the end. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as, as the episodes go on, obviously, you know, you, you have more, I want to say trauma, you just have to, you know, know when to show enough to say okay keep it moving and you know and editing from this sequence to the next sequence where i guess it's almost like a head scratch not so much a head scratch but more or less like it takes you out of that like okay boom you know like do you I mean, you've done it with films so is it a different you know is there a different take when you're doing it now as a series and you know you have another episode to go that you may not be directing. I mean, you, you may not be editing like the back to back, but you have the next one. 
Yeah, you know, it's one like chapter one was one of the episodes that was like basically had its like first layout chapter one and actually chapter 10 um, because both of those were shot in the same location. I was working on both of those episodes at the same time. And I think, you know, when Alex came on, he actually could watch chapter one. So it kind of informed him on the, not only relationships that were created in chapter one, but how, what she experienced in chapter one influences where she's at in chapter two. Um, so that was super helpful to have that foundation of that episode to inform us throughout the series. Um, and also, you know, Mabel's episode chapter 10 was one of the ones that we kind of, I think tonally we found our footing in that one early on and seeing the importance of Mabel and her existence in Cora's life that's how we became inspired to weave her throughout the rest of the episodes. So when you finally get to the end, I think it's satisfying for the audience as a viewer to have that aha moment and realize, oh, that's the importance of Mabel in Cora's life. You know, Barry has to watch all of these things put together, you know, but you're the editor, you're the, you're the second person out there who has to see just as much footage as he is, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and then you're the one who has to determine, along with the other guys, uh, other folks, what needs to be stayed in or not. When that's done, having you seen it, can you walk away from that, going home, and then come back and say, okay, next day? <laughs> you can. You know, it was one of the episodes I feel like that was the most challenging for us was Indiana Winter. And it was one of the last episodes we worked on, but I feel like it was such an important episode to get right. Um, and that was the one that Barry and I probably worked on the most, um, just so there was this balance of the, you know, the setup and the payoff. And, you know, in the episode, you're meeting new characters and you're also finding um, Cora and Royal connecting. And so we wanted to make sure that the audience was not, um, you know, the payoff was something that the audience felt like was deserved and earned. And so really making sure that we crafted these storylines and so that they made sense. So once you arrived at the end of the episode, there was a satisfaction um, by, you know, the way that you view the series. And so I think that was the one where Barry was like, you know, don't give up on me, Joy, we gotta keep going. Um, because, you know, at a moment doing the series during the pandemic and not having that release of being able to go grab a drink with a friend or go grab a meal with, um, you know, other editors, like just being, you know, work home, work home, it kind of was very isolating. Um, but I think the way that we came through um, at the end was by having the support of one another um, during, you know, the collaboration and and creating the series that we knew was important to, you know, tell. What's your takeaway having worked on this project? You know, you've worked with Barry before, but when, this is a TV project, or you know, not so somewhat because it's being played on a streaming platform. Mm -hmm. But you've worked on this one. It's a longer project for now. You know, yeah. what's your takeaway from this? as far as your skills that you can take on to your next project? Yeah, it's. I would say that this series was challenging on all fronts. Um, one of the things that we definitely worked with, this is the first time that we've worked with so much um, visual effects, um, creating trains underground, uh, <laughs> um, you know, Cora falling in that void in that opening shot. And so I think one of the things that we really honed in is like if you're going to create these worlds, even though they're fantastical worlds, they still have to be grounded in some authenticity. And so that's one of the things that Barry and I were really, really um, um, focused on was setting up, you know, this kind of sci-fi element of being underground in these different stations and making sure that they do have this fantasy element, but also kind of this magical realism. And, you know, Mark Freeberg, our production designer, and Carolyn Eslin, our costume designer, they both did such a great job at bringing that to real life and um, bringing that to life. And that's one of the things I wanted to honor in the edit was they went to all of this work to create this world. And so we wanted to cut it and, you know, add the effects in a way that it made everything cohesively stand out and that you as a viewer were believing um, the world that we had set up for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, there's the collaboration with Barry, but since the nomination, how has work been for you? Like, are you getting 
more projects thrown at you? Do you find it, if it's not buried, do you still have to compete for a lot more projects? You know, because at the end of the day, you know, we're not, <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been nearly five years and yeah. we still don't, I still can't name five or 10 black editors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's sort of like you open, you know, there's Terry and then there's yourself and the door has been open, but are mm-hmm. there people being pushed in or is it still, you know, like trying to open the door more? You know, I've been really focused on, there's a great um, group of black female um, editors that um, I mentor, help get jobs, you know, and I, it's been amazing to see them take off, you know, one's working on a Marvel series, or actually two are working on a Marvel series, one was on the HBO series, and um, one's doing a, a documentary, and so they are all flourishing, and it's one of the things that I really focus on is opportunity and access. And so I definitely, I'm not pulling up the ladder behind me. I'm pushing it down and making sure more people are coming up um, because, you know, I think, you know, editors are so vital in the storytelling and for a long time, it hasn't been that diverse. And so I don't want to just put someone in an opportunity because I want to say there's a black female editor go. I want to put someone in an opportunity where I know that they'll excel and they'll actually flourish and be a vi- flourish and be a vital part in the storytelling process. And so I've made sure that if I hear of an opportunity, I think it's a good fit for another editor, I bring them in and hopefully, you know, in another five to 10 years, you're saying that there's so many. <laughs> hey, many is good. <laughs> yes. More to marry as a statement goes. Exactly. You know, what do you want to do that you haven't done yet? It's still early in your career, but still, you never know, you know. You know, the you know, pandemic I, tells you that life is short. <laughs> life is short. I've been telling Barry, I really, really, really want to do an action film. So we'll see what's next for us. But hopefully that's coming down the pipe one, you know, at some at some point. <laughs> and at the end of the day, obviously, the Underground Railroad has been out now a few weeks, you know, uh, and, you know, people can still catch it. What's the sell to telling people to check this out? You know, not... You know, people always say that, you know, there's too much trauma now going on, but there's a history to be learned yeah. through this, you know, through these characters, through the settings that they're in, you know, uh, outside, for those who may not know who you are and you're standing online, line, whether it's Starbucks or anywhere else, and go, <laughs> nice series on that called The Underground Railroad, you should check it out. And I'm like, why? What do you say? <laughs> I would say, you know, I, The Underground Railroad, one of the things that we always try to attempt and hopefully we succeed at when we're creating these different projects is we want to give the audience an experience. And I'll say um, the Underground Railroad series is an experience like none none other. And I feel like it's presenting, you know, not only Black people in a way that they may not have been seen before, but telling the story in a way that, you know, hasn't been depicted before. And it's not something to, I think, to dismiss because of the subject matter. I think it's something that you should embrace due to the subject matter. And someone said, you know, on Twitter, I believe it was like, it's not uh, you should watch, it's a necessity to watch. And that's one thing that I hope if people can't watch it now, maybe in the future, they can bring themselves to embrace the story and realize that the only thing that we're doing is honoring our ancestors and the dignity that they presented um, throughout their struggle. Well said. Choi, it's always good talking to you. It's always oh, good seeing you. you. Maybe Thank we'll you. we'll see each other again on another award show, of you know, <laughs> we can relax, you know, and it's not work, you know, so wherever you're at, you got a good background. You're, you're obviously somewhere sunny. You know, so keep it going and uh, oh, thank you. I'll see you down the road. Okay, sounds good. Have a good one. Take care. Okay. Bye.